It's the Friendly Fire Show, episode 244 for the start of August 2023. I'm Steve Wright, you're Ben Salter. Well, not you, listener, but the guy that you're about to hear is Ben Salter. Hi. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Oh, hi, Steve. We're back. <laughs> We're back. We've been we've been playing some games, which is unusual for us. Normally, we just talk about games that we don't play. Although I've I've slowed down my Final Fantasy 16 progression. I'm like in the midway. I know from all the reviews, which I didn't read, but I skimmed, that it gets bad story wise, like a third or two thirds of the way in. So it's kind of like, you know what they say: never read the reviews because it's put me off carrying on. Now I know it only gets worse from this point. Aren't you glad that you've invested so much time and energy into into this to date? Yep. Oh yep. well, good, Absolutely. good, good. There's well, been so the there's been so few games. I we've gotten gym memberships again. We've started going back That's to the crazy. gym, and it's that weird thing where like you've do, you've do the gym once and like your arms feel like they're gonna fall off. Like that's that's really fun. So right now I have like the the side of pec pain that I can kind of move my arms about this much. Um, it also probably just means I'm old. But did I tell you that all of my crippling back pain is now shifted just directly into my hip? That's something new. No. Well, is, maybe that's better. <laughs> is hip pain better than back pain? It is because I can, it's not that bad. And I'm, I think I can start getting the hip pain completely out too. Like I've, I've finally gotten on top of my back pain, which basically was like, I'm just going to call it like a symptom of COVID and lockdowns. So I probably just had bad habits that led to Could be. bad postures and stuff, but Anyway, no one cares about this. Let's let's talk about games that we've played, but not yet. Well, you've already talked about Final Fantasy, but let's talk about Pikmin 4 because that's a new game that I don't that's really have any interest in. It's a surprisingly... Oh, gosh, you never have interest in anything. <laughs> uh, it's a surprisingly popular new release. I kind of thought it would slide under the radar. Pikmin traditionally hasn't been a big seller, hasn't been a big news item. Uh, Matt on the site gave it a 9 out of 10, so promising again mm-hmm. we haven't really played it that much i played about three hours maybe a little bit longer um so enough to be able to say it's pretty good it's clearly the best one to play so pikmin 1 and 2 got re-released on switch as well but they're just ports upscaled like that's it mm. uh probably wouldn't play them pikmin 3 is actually ancient it's 10 years old so i would jump straight into four it's it got a little bit of that nintendo handholdy at the start where it's very much a like Go get the sparkling object that you need to find, and then it's immediately there. It is that one right there. You need to walk over there. Get that one, which is a little bit annoying, but you get past that. Yeah, uh, it's actually a really good puzzle game. So I think Pikmin's hard to explain because it's it's technically an RTS, which is rare on consoles, and it kind of it, that sends the wrong message to say that's what it is because I hate RTS games. So boring. They take forever. It's it is real time strategy, so it's correct, but. It's more of a puzzle game. So it's more you're controlling these little flower men uh, and then you, you pretty much use them to do your bidding, solve puzzles, defeat some creatures, get back to your ship in the nighttime. And yeah, it runs really well, It's which is surprising again for this ancient handheld that we're still playing in 2023 for some reason. Uh, yet another game after the, the disgrace of Pokemon, which barely moved at all, that we've had a few games that run pretty well for such old hardware. And... Definitely more accessible, more colorful. It's in that Unreal Engine 4 or 5, whichever one they're up to for, I think, uh, which is relatively new for Nintendo, but it's it's definitely got that look. You know that's that it's in that engine. You know the style I'm thinking when it's kind of like, you know this is an Unreal game because it's got that kind of, that haze effect. Sheesh, that kind yeah. of Sheen, I was going to say. Yeah, it's like a sheen. It's like a depth of field. Like it looks a little bit, you just know that's where it's being made in, but it looks okay. It kind of suits Pikmin. Uh, and definitely more accessible from a one story point of view because it makes a lot more sense than some of the previous ones. Um, and two, it's far less stressful. So Pikmin 1, you had 30 days to finish the game, 30 in-game days, and each, oh. game, each day is only a few minutes. And if you don't get everything done and kind of manage, it was all resource management. If you don't use your time properly, you get to a point where it's like you, you can't do it. Uh, and it was much easier to accidentally drown your Pikmin and things like that then. So actually quite an anxious game. Uh, that's kind of all gone for this one. It's, it's a lot more relaxed. Does anyone ever find that mechanic fun? Like even in thing like Dead Rising had a whole bunch of that. Like oh, each day has mm. times, and then like they added oh, you got to give yourself a vaccine every so often. Like is that fun for anyone? That's just like anxiety riddling for me. It's like I have enough of that in my day to day life. I don't need it added into a game. Like Majora's Mask, even like that was fine. That was a different, like, slightly different way to kind of use that mechanic in a way that wasn't so annoying. But, like, games yeah. that have a timer, like a constant timer, or just I'm 
instantly out. Totally agree. And so that's probably why Pikmin 1 is hard to go back to now. It, it is quite an anxiety-inducing game. Uh, and it's it's just to kind of give it some some framing and some context and to make you do stuff. Otherwise, it's just endless, essentially. And it uh, there'd kind of be no pressure to do anything. And a lot of the strategies around the fact that you only have a very set time to get every bit done. Uh, anyway, they've figured out better ways to do that now, essentially. It's, it's a lot more open... Uh, apparently Miyamoto is still working on it. He's in all the photos when it's like, look, I made this game, which he doesn't do for Mario or Zelda anymore. So maybe he did do it for Pikmin. Uh, but yeah, it, it sounds decent. You don't sound like you played any Pikmin game. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't say it's your, your jam at all. No. Uh, but it's, it, yeah, surprisingly popular. A game that came out in the middle of the year. It has a That's spaceship rare. and and it yep. deals with space themes. So maybe I would get into it. And it's a dog. Really. So I'm not really into video game dogs, but... I know that much. It's kind of a dog. Oh, it's not uh, a dog. My dog, my dog hates it, so it's it looks enough like a dog for him to dislike it. So close to a dog, I suppose. Could so a, movement. a handheld only game for for Ben Salter, from the sound of it, yeah, or no? Probably. So he's this way. <laughs> uh, so it actually plays quite well on handheld. So it, it it suits the previous few Switch games. I think have been best as as console games, especially Zelda and and Metroid Prime, but. This one really does suit being played in the handheld. So, uh, yeah, I'd play like that. All right. There's a demo, I think, even. Oh, there is a demo, yeah. So if people want to try it, or if I want to try it and not splash cash, I could I could do that. No no you guarantees, no promises, but it sounds no like from, from so far, you, you, best of the franchise. Yeah, de- yeah. I would, well, certainly the best to play now. If you haven't played any before... All four are available on Switch, which is quite rare for the whole of a Nintendo series, especially a 20-year-old series, uh, to all be playable on one platform. They traditionally avoid that at all costs by just having like at least one game inaccessible forever, uh, which is, that's normally the Nintendo way. They love to keep things gated and impossible to play. Pikmin, for the first time ever, they've put them all on one platform, except for that weird 3DS spin-off, which doesn't count. What was that called? Pikmin 3DS? Uh, called no. Hey Pikmin or something like or Hey oh. You Pikmin or something like that. I don't, I don't really know what that is. It doesn't count. And I'm not counting that when I say that Pikmin 4 is has finally been released after 10 years, which is, it's kind of one of those games which I don't want to put in the Duke Nukem 3D category of like, it finally came out. But it kind of is because Miyamoto said in 2015, Pikmin 4 is in development and it's basically done. And then we heard nothing for like six, seven years and then it just reappeared. So it's it's similar to, to Metroid Prime 4, you're saying? Well, so I mean, I suppose if we're thinking what franchises, like what does it give us hope for? Metroid Prime is an excellent example. It's been longer than that. The last one of those came out in 2007. And we've, yeah, we've now had a game in development for, well, it's going to get close to 10 years. By the time that game actually comes out, when did they announce that? 2016 or 17? It might get to 10 years before it actually comes out. Um, but yeah, it kind of felt like a game that was never going to release. It was going to be one of those, yeah, Metro Prime 4s where Miyamoto would just keep saying, oh yeah, it's coming, stay tuned for a Nintendo Direct and it would just never release and would never happen. But it did. Like, so I feel like there's some level of hope for those, those 10 year plus franchises, which just never release or we keep hearing is coming. Yeah. Well, what, so like, what are you most excited for? You've, you've put a little list for us. Like there's. This is a cheat sheet. We don't need to talk about these games necessarily, <laughs> but I am I'm thinking similar games in this category. Perfect Dark. We've known about that in development for what five years. Is it and in development, kind of or did they like assemble a team, make a CG what? trailer, and then like sort of not have a team anymore, and people keep coming and going? But yes, so I, I, I know what I, your point. I put that in the whenever it's going to get that game category, but could be one of the Pikmin fours. It could be a, it eventually just appears and it's like oh it's ready to go. I think the, the Splinter Cell reboot, remake, whatever, is at risk of falling in a similar category. It wasn't announced that long ago, but it just has that written all over it. Uh, Mass Effect announces it's coming again, but then we heard nothing. And it just, it, for some reason, I put that in that fear category of like it could just disappear and go silent for years. We'll get Mass Effect 4 or whatever it's going to be called the same time we get Elder Scrolls 6, which is like... They, oh, they, they, they'll, okay. they'll spin it up soon yeah like it's i don't i think it's i think that one's gonna come out i'm not sure about perfect dark or splinter cell i'm, I'm pretty sure mass effects is gonna come out because ea will milk that until the corpse is like a dry husk but i don't i like don't hold your breath for it to come out anytime soon is is my thoughts 
No. Um, well, yeah, it's been a long time. It's only been about 10 years for Mass Effect, though, so there's, there's hope, potentially. Actually, less. Andromeda was only 2016 or so, so... Yes, and it's much better now that it's been patched and stuff, so, if, you know, if people have led you to believe it's awful, I have a very soft spot in my heart for Andromeda. I quite mm. enjoyed it. So, anyway. Um, I've been meaning to play it. It's very good. Uh, yeah, otherwise, there's not that many 10-year-plus franchises that have actually lasted as long as Pikmin 4 that... They probably deserve a comeback. Uh, the big one, GTA, has actually been the same amount of time without a new game as Pikmin, and it's still in development for two billion dollars or something insane. So right. games like that, which are like just we know will be released, it's just a matter of when. So, oh, there'll be seven more re-releases of GTA Five to tide you over. Don't worry about that. Yeah, That's fine. I'm looking forward to getting that on whatever's next. You've made uh, a big I list. I was trying to think of ones that aren't on your list to try to, yeah. to to give you a chance to have some water and to think about it myself. I couldn't really think of any, but th- something I kept going to, and it wasn't a franchise. I was a huge fan of a 360 game called Dark Void. I don't know if you ever played it. Oh yeah, yeah. It was I basically I like the cover. Rocketeer the game, and it was so much fun. And now with, like, Anthem, which wasn't a great game, but, like, had that kind of flight stuff, like, locked in. Like, I'd love to see a Dark Void 2 or, Dark like, Void something Dark. like that. Yeah. So, that would it would actually become a franchise because there, there would be two games and it would not just be a single game. That's, like, literally the only thing I could get my brain to come up with, which is pretty the old 10-year-old plus games that could come back. They pretty that, much all sit with Xbox. It's all their bought games, which they never they never did anything with. Uh, Banjo Kazooie still seems the number one for me that they made. They had one attempt with it. It just kind of it feels like something that should have had another go. It wasn't a bad game, Nuts and Bolts, which they made. It just wasn't right for the time. Yeah. Um, same with Conker. Like it, they did a remake of Conker's Bad Fur Day, and then they just decided that's not for us. And I get it at the time. Like that kind of mid to late two thousands was full on Halo Three. Uh, COD 4 being on console and amazing at the time. Like, that was their demographic, Gears of War. Yeah. All that, that very dark, heavy, hardcore shooter. So they weren't going to release either of those two games. But I feel like now that's kind of what they're missing from their lineup. Uh, otherwise, it's been a long time since a new Bioshock. I kind of feel like 10 years or so since Infinite came out. But that's Maybe the, that could come back at some point. Well, it's coming back as... What's that stupid new one called from Ken Levine? Oh, what's it called? Haven? No, that's not right. There's a he's making a Bioshock successor that's not allowed to be called Bioshock. Bioshock. Yeah. Hmm. So, so there you go, you get that. The thing with Bioshock is that Infinite was kinda it wrapped up the story quite nicely. And hmm. some franchises I think don't need to come back because there's it's like that T V show that just has like the one extra season that you're like, Oh you should have just packed it in. And you know, like you don't want your game to become that's true. That. Like, the, even like The Last of Us Part... Th- would it be three? Yeah. Yeah, they like, did another one. Do you just need to keep doing it? Or do you just... I don't know. Like, and if you use different characters, is it really the... Like, I don't know. Like, some stories, you know, you kind of exhaust them and you run the risk of, of damaging yep. them if you keep going back. And, you know, like even Assassin's Creed. You know, like, they had that whole... The, the present day thing bad. and like an apocalypse and they like kind of milked that dry and they just kept pumping them out like there you can do damage to a franchise by not taking yeah. a break and giving it some space and time but anyway I, yeah i do think we'll get another twisted metal at some point only because there's a tv show and so if that's for some reason there's a weird tv show based on this if that's successful which it probably won't be now that i actually think about it and say it out loud They'd probably bring that back. I know they brought the classic games to PlayStation Plus. I don't know if we got them in Australia on a fact-based show because we don't necessarily have that tier. No, we did because it's. Oh, we it's, got them. They consider okay. them the the classics, so it's not premium. Right. It's the it's like the Resident it's Evil deluxe. Yeah, it's like the actual. P- I think it's the actual PS One and PS Two versions. It's well, that's good because they run that weird PS1 risk games. of those like it's it's the classic game, but it's like the PS Three remastered version of Twisted oh, yeah. Metal or something. But yeah, anyway, I, I'm totally sidetracking us. I, I loved the first Twisted Metal game. I don't think there's not much to, like, what do you do with a new Twisted Metal game apart from just make it look fancy and have... You just make one that's not yeah. ancient. Well, yeah, you basically remake the first one and then yeah, you're good. Yeah, that's what I... Sony love a remake. Half their <laughs> games are remade. Half the PS5 exclusives. you got Demon's Souls, you've got Last of Us. Like it's it's their most of their their heavy hitting exclusives are remakes. Get Bluepoint on it, and you're you're set, done. 
Yeah, right. that could be good. I just want new uh, things that are good, I think. Or... Yeah. What? Is like, there much new stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, this is the gear of the re-release and the remake and the, the remaster. Although you have been playing a few new games. I have. Um, have what have you been playing? I know you haven't, but I'm going to talk about Exo Primal first because I'm honestly surprised about how kind of fun and stupid mm-hmm. it is. It's... I played eight minutes. I tried to play, <laughs> and I got stuck having to do the link your Capcom ID, which I didn't have or couldn't remember my password, so I had to make a new one, and that took forever, so I didn't have time to actually finish the tutorial before this podcast. Well, you won't be able to play Street Fighter Six then. Oh, you will now that you figured out your password, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. that's... Can we please get... That. Can we just, just automatically, play. like, link your capcom id with your xbox live account and just i don't know i've done that now but like it'll unlink at some point just let me play let me choose no i don't want to link but then you you. can't keep progression or something oh who cares just let me just say your progression won't be saved fine (laughs) whatever so it's basically it's it's like dinosaurs inside overwatch um it's very much like a hero shooter with 10 10 i think 10 different like mechanized suits and they all have you know there's supports tanks and and assault people um it's the only reason that i like it is because i don't have to pay any money for it and it's not free to play but it's part of xbox game pass so it's a you know free to play because i have a subscription if i had to spend money on it i don't think i would have stuck around as long as i have Mm, but can oh. we say that steve because it's part of xbox live xbox game pass console or ultimate not core or pc say that. or pc game pass <sighs> <laughs> and i don't know if there's cross progression i'm sure there is because there's cross play and stuff um it's it's i find it very simplistic like if you've played an overwatch and you kind of have a rough idea of what the you like your class character is supposed to do i feel like you can excel pretty hard and then you're playing with people mm. who who haven't and Either it works to your advantage because you're playing against them in a team of five versus another team of five where, like, you're just stomping the other team. Or you get saddled with people that are, like... The objectives are very clear. Guard this point. If five of you stay on the point, there's a little thing that says five and your percentage goes up higher. There's always, like, the one idiot who just runs off aimlessly, like, not being part of the team. It's like, I just wish you would read the screen or do something. Um, Like, it's, it's... it's there's not a lot to it once you kind of understand the the core it's the maps are very few and far between the objectives really don't change you're either like shooting dinosaurs or doing like one or two other menial tasks like and that's not to say it's not enjoyable but it's only enjoyable because it's one free and two kind of mindless so i had a hockey game last night and i'm always wired for like two hours i got home at like 11 o'clock had all the lights off, put on headphones, like just played Exo Primal for an hour just to like sort of like get ready to go to bed. And like, I couldn't tell you what happened. Like it was just kind of like mindless, like shooty, shooty, heel, heel, done. Like it's fun enough for that. Achievements, no money, kind of winning combo. But like, I don't know, this doesn't translate into a franchise in my mind. It doesn't translate into like... (laughs) <laughs> i guess it. i'm recommending it but it's not like a glowing recommendation if that all makes sense and like i yeah. don't want to talk on a mic with people and strategize and become like a professional exo primal thing and like once i've finished the achievements of which one is kill a hundred thousand dinosaurs so i'm not gonna do that one because i think i'm at like ten thousand after like 16 hours of gameplay um i'm put it down and i'll never think about it again it's just mm. like popcorn kind of thing and that's that's what these games can be like sometimes they get so caught up in we need to have multiple seasons we need to keep bringing people back in and hooking them on for something and you have to keep playing i think they're fine to pick up and play for a couple of weeks even days or months whichever way you want to go and that's it and that's the end of your experience like they don't all need to hook you there's so many games there's so many things that compete for your time it's not always going to be you play this game and you play it for years situation and for some people it might be but i think the average player it's not uh, and it's it's better when they sometimes realize that. That's who we're going for. In this case, there's going to be a mass influx of players because it's launched on Game Pass, so people will try it because of that. It's not a free-to-play game, so it's got a bit more worth than that from that point of view. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's... I like that it sounds like one you could just pick up and play for a little period of time and then decide I'm done and never need to go back to it. That sounds good to me. Yeah, and like every game ever nowadays, you know, like for people that try it, 
not try it free for people who are accessing it for free on game pass like there are a million microtransactions that you can buy if you want to unlock the the three locked behind xp characters you can spend i think like 20 bucks australian and then if you want to deck them out in you know i don't know a police officer outfit which is absolutely not something that i think is there but you know what i mean like you can spend five bucks to do that like they'll get enough money out of it i think that it's it's worth capcom's while it's such a weird thing though especially in the face of all these people like crying out for a dino crisis remake to make something like adjacent but nothing like it at the same time and with a character who looks like the protagonist from the original dino crisis it's like it's Mm. a kind of weird insulting slap in the face to people who want that retro game but anyway um something else i've been playing that i think you would like if you're a star fox fan which i think you are uh, the the good old ones, not the the most recent terrible Wii U one, but the the old school one. <laughs> well, I think I think that that that's still valid. Or even like Starlink. Did you play Ubisoft Starlink? A bit, yeah. I've got I I bought it when they like six months after release. It went just from one hundred and fifty bucks down to like five because every store is like get this giant box out of our store. And I I wanted the digital version, but it cost eighty bucks, and I could get the actual game for five. So, but then I had to use a dumb little toy to get my ship, and eventually I gave up. But I, I didn't s- mind the concept. I think I spent like 20 bucks to buy the digital equivalents of the toys, because I couldn't be bothered doing that either. Um, so, take the good bits of Starlink and the good bits of Star Fox that you remember, and that's mm. Everspace 2, which Everspace 1 uh, apparently was very similar to what the sequel is, but it was more of like a procedurally generated thing. And this is more of a yeah. developed story that. based thing. It's really fun. You're just like, you're in a spaceship and you go to like warp to different planets and sectors. And you generally get into like dog fights with other ships, but you could go and mine and, you know, like customize your ship and do all these neat things. It's kind of like not star Trek, but star Trek, the experience, the fun time game. And it's just, it's, it's not super difficult it's kind of like exoprimal in that like if i just have like a half hour spare i'll just go and like explore a couple star systems and like not have to think too much about it just really really enjoyable um it's on pc game pass right now and on the 15th of august i want to say something like that it comes out on consoles and is part of game pass console great or ultimate not core um and it's experience or like xbox play anywhere so if you've been playing on pc you can play it on xbox and it all just transfers back and forth it's really good i would if you, if you are into the things i was talking about i think you'd enjoy it i think i might have played the first one and i had the base game it could be a different game but i think it was everspace and i didn't have the many expansions so i had like nothing to do because all the story <sighs> they added in was expansion only uh my only thought is do i want to play this like two months before starfield which also sounds like a lot of driving around between planets yeah well this is only driving around you know, like you're not going on a planet you're you live in the spaceship you are you're permanently mm. in the cockpit um but it is it seems like it'll be a like a long if you want to do everything it's probably like a 40 50 hour game so maybe that is a very good point on the precipice of starfield well, you've just ruined this, my half of my recommendations. <laughs> it, this always happens. There's like a certain type of game which hasn't been released for a while and two of them just both decide we're both going then. Resident Evil 4, Callisto Protocol launching at like exactly the same time, basically a couple of weeks or months apart. But basically play RE4, the same time. don't play Callisto. That's, that's it. Yeah, Problem solved. Absolutely. But I'm like, why did you pick that one time to go? Like basically any other time. Uh, that seems to happen. There's always like a... EA did it with Battlefield 1 and Titanfall. Their own two games against each other at the same time. Like It's always this, like, this is too samey to that other thing that you want me to do. I don't know. They're doing it at the movies now with Barbie and Oppenheimer. Oh, wait. (laughs) Exactly the same audience, apparently. Uh, Unbelievable. Okay, when we... that's us for this week, I think. We We don't have anything else. We've played... Well, we've played three games, which is quite a lot for us. I can't imagine we will play anything next week because I don't think there's anything coming out. Not a fact-based show, so I can't think of it. Is there something coming We're out? starting to get some stuff coming out in August, off the top of my head. Moving out two. Uh, mm-hmm. If you haven't played the first one, it's really good. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, 
at the start of the month on PC, at the end of the month yeah. on PS5, which looks really good, especially if you like having sex with bears, like literal bears. I don't know if you've seen that clip, mm-hmm. but I have an, I'll, I'll let you go that. look at that. Um, okay. There's a couple okay other things. That. September's the, the big month, obviously, but we're, we're getting back into to games, so we get some stuff to talk about. Not this time, maybe next week. You'll have to join us and find out. See you then.